This is the zeta function. 1 plus 1 over 2 to the s plus 1 over 3 to the s, and so on. Like any other function, you can plug values into it. When s equals 1, though, it becomes the harmonic series 1 plus a half plus a third, and so on, which is known to diverge, or basically add up to infinity. You can see the circle thing will spiral into infinity as I continue to add fractions to it. Therefore, because s equals 1 is undefined, it is called a singularity, or a pole. Nevertheless, the mathematicians like Euler are able to find values for any s is greater than 1. For example, when s equals 2, the zeta function is actually pi squared over 6. So, so far we know values for the zeta function for all the arguments above 1. This is our domain. But what if we plug in the numbers from 0 to 1? And what about the negative numbers? Surely, it doesn't make any sense when s equals stuff like negative 1. That just turns into 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on. Surely that is undefined since it would go to infinity. Well, no. In fact, in a sense, this adds up to negative 1 over 12. And this is where Riemann comes in, as well as a handy thing called analytic continuation. Basically, another word for expanding our domain so that we can define things like negative 1. Riemann actually went a step further and asked if we could plug in complex numbers. To review, a complex number is just another type of number. It is usually made up of a real part and an imaginary part, which has the imaginary number i or the square root of negative 1 in it. So what Riemann essentially did was turn our domain line into a domain plane of complex numbers. So now we can plug in any point in the plane into the zeta function and check for values. This is complex analysis when you're finding values for complex numbers. Anyways, here is how analytic continuation, or domain stretching, happens. This equation is the Euler product formula. On the left, it is just another way to write the zeta function in a concise way. On the right, like the sigma symbol meaning infinite sum, the pi symbol means an infinite product. This equation is defined for all complex numbers with the real part greater than 1. So now, 1 is a singularity, and the function is defined in this purple region. This next equation describes the zeta function in terms of another infinite function called the eta function. This function actually has a better chance of converging because of its alternating signs, so with this equation we can define all the complex numbers with real part between 0 and 1. This last equation is known as the functional equation. The main thing to notice here is this part, which allows us to reflect values of numbers we already know into the realm of negative numbers. See, if s is negative 1, 1 minus s will be 2. And we already know what zeta of 2 is. Also, notice that negative 1 and 2 are both exactly 1 and a half away from the number 1 half. This is the reflection. Essentially, we have folded our plane over the line at 1 half and expanded our domain into negative numbers. This equation actually tells us one more important thing. It takes the sign of pi s over 2. See, if s is a negative even number like negative 2, plugging it in causes the equation to take the sign of a whole integer multiple of pi. And we know from the unit circle that sign of any multiple of pi makes the y coordinate 0, and therefore the sign 0. All this means is that when you plug in negative even numbers from the complex plane, the zeta function will be 0. But mathematicians consider these zeros obvious, and so they call them trivial zeros. The non-trivial zeros are known to lie in this critical strip, and actually, all the non-trivial zeros we have found so far are on the line at 1 half. In fact, the Riemann hypothesis is that the real part of all non-trivial zeros is 1 half, so that they all lie on this critical line. Just to emphasize, if we had a machine for the zeta function and if we plugged in one of these points, the machine would return the value to be 0. But the Riemann hypothesis is exactly that. A hypothesis. Who knows? Maybe way up that critical strip toward infinity, one rebellious zero will be outside of the critical line, and all of number theory will come crumbling down. Nonetheless, there is a bounty of a million dollars out for anyone who can either prove the Riemann hypothesis mathematically, or just find that one rebellious zero. Doing either will have huge implications in number theory, and also the distribution of prime numbers.